All right. Thank you. Um, my name is still Matt Largen. And for the next couple hours, I'm at least still the president of, the, uh, of Williamson, Inc. So uh, we spent a few minutes talking about kind of where we were as a community. I want to spend the next few minutes talking about what are the things that got us here. What really matters, what matters when Amy talked about the site location salt search and what matters to companies when they decided to locate here. And in Williamson County specifically, it starts and ends with a conversation about education I referenced earlier. There is no doubt that the number one economic driver for Williamson County is the strength of our public education systems, no question. Uh, this particular chart shows what I referenced earlier, the fact that 54% of the population has at least a bachelor's degree. And Amy referenced how important that was for her and her clients, and the fact that there are not a lot of other communities across the country that can then say that number. You can see we have about, um, uh, in terms of graduate degrees, about twice the national average, same with undergraduates, and the percentage of population with a diploma is very high as well. Interesting part about this, you may be able to see it on the bottom, is the fact that when we asked on the survey, 40% of the respondents said they went to college in Tennessee and 73% said they went to college in the Southeast. So the difference between buying your talent or having that talent there, uh, we know this lines up really well with the study the Nashville Chamber did a few years ago that showed that 60% of the students who graduate from Middle Tennessee colleges and universities actually stay in the region for work. So great pipeline of talent for our companies. Um, you know, you, you've probably heard about the ACT scores, uh, obviously just talked about the graduation rate, but what gets lost sometimes is um, the scholarship dollars that the class actually earns. And this last class in Williamson County Schools earned $123 million of college scholarships, <laughs> which is extraordinary uh, to me. And I think it's also important, too, to talk about the great partnerships that we've got with our school system. We've, we've been working now for the last several years uh, with some folks in the business community and the schools to really push kids into more careers in IT, which we know is the biggest deficit in this workforce. And now we've also got a great partnership now with some other um, companies in Williamson County around manufacturing other skill sets, if for nothing else, to try to get kids to understand the relevancy between what they learn in the classroom and how that can be applied to a job when they get out. So for those of you that aren't involved in, the, in this, I, su I strongly suggest you know, go into the school, go talk to the, talk to the teachers, get involved, see us afterwards so we can figure out a way to plug you in the school system. I think, I think the best thing that we can do is help bridge that gap between the education and the business community. Um, next, you know, it's important that education is valued not just for a K through 12 level, but also for the fact that when we ask the question, do you support continued ed opportunities for your employees, overwhelmingly over 70% of the people who responded to this survey said yes, they do. And that's exactly the kind of companies you want in your community that value education, that value continuing to invest in their employees. It's very attractive when you're recruiting a company. It's also just attractive for growing the area to know there's the commitment on both ends for the companies to invest in their workforce and then for the workforce to give back to those companies. So thrilled to see this percentage as high as it is. Next, transportation. Transportation is probably the big singular issue, and you'll hear a lot about it in the panel, I'm sure, that we've got to figure out a way we can solve from a regional standpoint. And there's a lot of great work that's going on there, but you'll see the stats. Um, Williamson County and Davidson County are really close in terms of the number of people who commute from one county to the other. So the reverse commuting doesn't really exist here, which is even more reason why this is a regional issue that has to be solved. And um, we know there has to be a Williamson County specific solution, but we also know it has to fit in the context of the greater Nashville region solution when it comes to transportation. Um, this is interesting too, I thought I'll end with this slide before we make the introductions of our panelists, but you know, we talk a lot about how we compare to different regions. Amy referenced that early in her speech and I talk about it as well. And I think it's important to note that if you look at the counties we compete against, the regions we compete against, Austin, Raleigh, Charlotte, Tampa, Indianapolis, in the last five years, we've been extremely successful at a 27% job growth rate. It's almost as dominating as Kentucky has been in the basketball field up until the last game in Notre Dame. Was a little tough. But anyway, the point about this slide I think is really important is that economic development is about more than headlines. And for Williamson County specifically, you've seen really steady job growth. And we know that about 85% of the new jobs that have been announced in the last five years have come from our existing companies. And that's why it's really important that we pay particular attention to our existing companies because that's where your job growth comes from. So at this point, I um, want to introduce 
of the presidents of three major commercial real estate companies in the region that have changed and will continue to change the landscape, not just in Williamson County, but the entire national region. Combine their companies manage nearly 33 million square feet between office, retail, industrial, and multifamily space. Uh, they're going to provide us an insight on what to expect in the future of both the region and Williamson County. And at this point, I'd like to welcome to the stage Doug Brandon, the Southeast Regional Managing Principal at DTZ, Steve Kalinske, the Managing Director of CB Richard Ellis Nashville, Janet Miller, the CEO and Market Leader of Colliers Nashville, and my co-moderator for today's middle panel, Joey Hatch, Skanska's co-CEO. As the panelists are making their way to the stage, I want to update you on some projects that we heard about at last year's Outlook event, starting with Berry Farms and City Park. Berry Farms and City Park brought to you by Boyle Development. The retail component, this is in South Franklin, the retail component is 66,000 square feet. Uh, started in 2015, will be completed in 2016. Berry Farms Town Center office component can hold, uh, house up to 750,000 square feet of office space to start this year and delivery date in 2016. City Park in Brentwood, a redevelopment that I'm sure you've all passed and seen on Franklin Road, will have approximately 40,000 square feet of retail and approximately a half million square feet of office spread over eight buildings. The retail will be complete actually in April of this year. And the first tenant's already open for business. Neighborhood Bar and Blaze Pizza is scheduled to open April 8th. Next is Ovation in Franklin. This is the 147 acre mixed use center located in a, at the Crothers and McEwen intersection, retail, fine dining, entertainment, hotels, commercial office and residential. 480,000 square feet of retail and entertainment by South Star and Thomas Land. We'll have a hotel with 450 rooms and then a 1.4 million square feet of commercial space by Highwoods. The project actually had their groundbreaking um, last October of 2014. Next is Franklin Park. Franklin Park by Spectrum Emery. Uh, building one is up and, and nearly fully leased. Building two will begin construction in late summer. It's the second of five buildings in the 1.25 million square feet of Class A office space development. The now tenants of Frank Franklin Park One include Acadia Healthcare, Franklin American Mortgage, Eco Energy, HCA, Thomas Burton Law Firm, and Worthy Publishing Groups all companies that were existing to Williamson County. And this is really consistent with the conversations our team has with our companies. The biggest challenge they face in the short term is actually being out of space. So again, shows how important paying attention to your existing cu customers are. And the one piece that I want to add that's gotten a lot of media attention, at least include, that wasn't talked about last year was the Hill Center Brentwood by HD Realty Company. It's a mixed use development that will feature 450,000 square feet of office space and 150,000 square feet of restaurant and retail space, space, office leasing by Southeast Venture. Phase one is opening October 2016 and will feature 157,000 square feet of office and 66,000 square feet of retail. LBMC is the, is the announced anchor tenant for that project. I know this is not a comprehensive list of all the developments that's happening in Williamson County. Believe me, we'd be here all afternoon if that was the case, but I just wanted to showcase some of the major developments happening right now in Williamson County. Um, so with that, I will actually turn it over to um, Joey to ask the first question of our panel. Thanks, Matt. So Matt asked me to start with a softball question, some, something that could be hit out of the park, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going a little uh, high and inside, and I'm going to ask uh, Janet to respond to this first. This is a two-part question. The clock's ticking. That's right, In your opinion, in your opinion, will future growth be in Williamson County or downtown Nashville or both? And why does the relationship between Nashville and Williamson County matter? That's not a softball. That is like my <laughs> life. I'm fired up about that question. So uh, I think you know that's kind of a hot button with me. Here's what I think. The growth is going to be in Williamson County. It's going to be fantastic, right? Because you're going to have these amazing companies looking for a wonderful suburban setting. It is going to be in downtown Nashville also because you have companies that want that urban product. And the thing about it is, is that is great for every person in this room that there's a demand for both. And Matt knows from working 20 years of economic development, having a broad portfo portfolio of choice is the way you attract companies. Some, some companies just have an urban culture some companies would not think about being downtown. So the fact that we have the product 
we are both going to be successful. And that is one thing I know for sure, as Oprah would say. There you go. <laughs> All right, who's next? Does anybody want to jump in on that? Yeah, sure. Um, I couldn't agree more, more with Janet. There are companies that are urban um, residents, and then there's companies that, that, that are suburban. They want the campus feel. They want the, the, the green. They want the park. They, they want to live close to, or they want to work close to where they live. Uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of competition between the two counties at all. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yeah, short and sweet. That, um, the relationship between the two counties is critical. Uh, and one of the strengths of our MSA, our 10 county MSA, is all of the counties work together. It's not about Williamson versus David, it's about the Middle Tennessee MSA. They've got urban core, high density, parking issues. Williamson County has more green space work live, um, you know, and with the millennials, millenniums, whatever they're called, not the baby boomers. <laughs> We're not them. The kids in the, they call it the pajama, the pajama workforce. They work in their pajamas from home. But uh, yeah, my daughter's one of them, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, it's, it's critical. I mean, we've got to have both. And, uh, and Williamson County has that feel. Davidson County has a, has a whole different feel, but it complements each other very, very well and very essential to each other's success. All right. Yeah, that's great. Matt? Great, great answer. Um, talk about, uh, sort of frame the discussion about the presence that your company already has here in Williamson County. The brokers working in the area and the companies that you've worked with in the past. And I mean, Steve, you uh, want to I'll give a shot? Sure. <clears throat> well, Nissan has been a long-term client of CBRE. We, we assist uh, Nissan uh, throughout North America with, with their needs. Um, Jackson National has been a great client of, of uh, CBRE over the years. Um, Comdata <clears throat> has recently uh, hired CBRE to help them relocate. I could go on. That's good. That's no good. need. Yeah. No need. <laughs> could you say those one more time? Save time for the fist fight. Yeah. Um, That's Matt, right. So, um, <laughs> Just um, make sure there's not a fireman on stage, <laughs> right? Nobody's a volunteer fireman. Money should be on the chick on stage. That's right. Uh, so I had a lot of fun. I'm fairly new in this job. I've been doing this six months. He's even newer in his job. We, neither one of us know what we're doing yeah. just yet. But uh, uh, I had so much fun uh, polling my brokers to see what our business is, and it was kind of uh, astounding for me. We sold uh, over $100 million worth of investment real estate in Williamson County last year. So to me, that's just a testament to what a great county this is. Uh, we are working right now uh, with George Tomlin on the Brentwood Summit project. Uh, I saw Glenn here. We're working on Franklin Summit uh, with the South Star guys. We're really excited about that. And we've represented all kinds of clients from the Tesla dealership to Microsoft. And then you throw on, I, you and I probably worked 100 deals down here mm -hmm. economic development wise. So I am a, I am a fan of Williamson County. Uh, same here. Um, our company manages, just on the landlord side, we manage and lease, manage over 2 million square feet of Class A office space in Williamson County, and we, man and we lease over 2 million square feet. Uh, and that's just from the landlord side. So on the tenant side, it's a whole, it's, it's a lot harder to sort of keep track of those numbers, but just the, the upscale, you know, product that Williamson County <coughs> offers on a consistent basis. It, it's a great landscape for all of us to really prosper and do more and more. Uh, there's a lot of room for growth. There's a lot of land. There's a lot of developable land. Uh, there's just a lot of great factors that we're really excited about. Nashville's landlocked. Davidson County's landlocked to a certain extent. Williamson County has a more open landscape with a lot more potential longer term. All right, uh, I'll go next and whoever feels like jumping in here so we saw a lot of great information from Amy about what she gets involved in with potential clients that are coming to Middle Tennessee. What are clients expecting now or today that you haven't seen in the past? What do some of those new and interesting things look like? I'll start. Uh, I would say, uh, as Amy mentioned, speed, right? Every, nobody's giving enough time. <clears throat> They're not thinking, companies aren't thinking far enough out. So man, you've got to turn on a dime. So I would say, uh, speed, I would say the analytics piece of it, and this is one that may not come up, which is the confidentiality requirements of these clients. 
because they've got human lives on the line and it's super disruptive if your employees know you're thinking about moving, even out of a county. So I know I signed an NDA uh, yesterday for a project and Bert said, uh, if, if you and I talk about it, they're gonna take our houses away. So uh, it's just the confidentiality needs and it makes good sense why it's that way. I and mean, then I think on, on the, the workforce side is the biggest thing. Uh, the workforce is different. Uh, Work-life balance is much more important now to the young, uh, young people coming out of college. They, they don't want to work 80 hours a week. They want to they have accessibility, remote access to uh, the, the whole quality of life is much more important. And I think companies that are attracting the top labor have to be able to attract that with the amenities with all the bells and whistles in a building, with the restaurants, with the green space, with the parks. Uh, and I think that has totally changed instead of giving somebody a 100 square foot cube and saying this is yours, you have to work here all day. That's, that's what's changed dramatically over the last 10 years. Yeah, and I think we've noticed that too with the developments that I talked about earlier. They have incorporated those kind of changes from Ovation to Franklin Park to all of them. It's certainly the walkability, it's the green space. It is trying to attract that new pajama class of employees, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> So uh, let's even take a, a step back, and, and because you all work regionally, and we, we've talked a lot regionally, I think that's really important, is just talk about the office market landscape in general in Middle Tennessee and, and where you see as potential next areas uh, develop, and maybe some strengths and weaknesses of the areas sort of in general. Everyone wants to start with that. Well, uh, I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Um, it. It's very interesting. We just finished our quarterly report yesterday afternoon for Middle Tennessee. And these numbers are astounding. Class A office space vacancy rate, 2.3% in Williamson County, okay? Brentwood, 0.9%. So every building in Brentwood is 99% occupied. Every building in Cool Springs is 97.5% occupied. That's unheard of not only here, but nationally. And, and, I, and I travel a lot all over, the company, all over the country, and you don't see that. I mean, if you're a landlord, you've just gotta be drooling. And, uh, you know, cause rates are moving faster than they've ever moved. Uh, you know, so it's important. We have, no, we have no space in Williamson County. These projects, Ovation, Franklin Park, that are coming online in the next two years, we're gonna miss a two year window with a 30, 40, 50,000 foot user that we, we don't have any place to put them. And the danger of that is if they can't find the space here, they'll put it in Charlotte, North Carolina, or they'll put it in Austin. Amy was talking about uh, how availability of space can drive deals. And so, you know, on the one hand, you think, man, that's awesome. We're 100% leased and to sit back and collect the checks. But if you don't have place for these companies that are adding thousands of jobs, you can lose them from your region. So I see where we are today as a risky place, mm -hmm. but I also know if you tally up every building over between now and 2017 that has announced that could be built, it's about 10 or 11 million square feet of space. This market's absorbing about a million square feet a year. So the pendulum could swing the other way and it's gonna be fascinating to see what gets built because they can't all get built. So. Right. Yeah, Davidson County and Williamson County have the same problem. There's no space available for a new building. <clears throat> so I think you may see some of the older developments, maybe some old warehousing areas, maybe along I-65, getting repurposed, okay. redeveloped, knocked down, and, and, and rebuilt. Because mm -hmm. what Janet said is very, very true. If we can't continue to provide the large blocks of space, they're gonna go someplace else. Mm -hmm. No matter how nice it is here, if there's no office space developed, they're gone. All right, uh, so I know in, in the construction business, as soon as you really get busy, everyone starts worrying about the peak. And are we <laughs> peaking? What's next? What's gonna happen? So this question, uh, all of you work in somewhat regional, national environments with your firms. What are you hearing from your peers across the U.S. about what's going on in Middle Tennessee right now? They all wish they were here. They all wish they had a piece, they had a piece, of, the, piece of the pie that, that uh -huh. the three of us are enjoying right now. Yeah. And I don't see that slowing down anytime soon unless we can't deliver any, any additional product. But, but I know we can continue to deliver for a while. It is kind of humorous how your phone rings and it's like, hey, I want to come up there and represent your companies. 
because I got yeah. nothing going on at home. Yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> You're like, no. With the CBRE good, yeah. national um, portfolio we have, there, there are people calling me every day saying they've got a, a client that wants to move to Nashville or is evaluating moving to Nashville or they want to increase their presence in Nashville. Every day. every day. Every day I get those calls. And what you're seeing, too, is the quality of the investor has gone way up. Uh, a lot of these institutional investors mm -hmm. that are running money for either these big insurance companies, pension funds, they would, five years ago, they wouldn't touch Nashville. They didn't want to, Nashville was a tier two city. They wanted tier one. Uh, they wanted maximum returns in tier one. Now those, the, the, the big insurance companies, the big institutions are finally coming in. And now they, they think $35 a foot on class A in, in the CBD is a bargain. Uh, and, and it is a bargain. Uh, and it's, I mean, Highwoods Properties took a very substantial position mm -hmm. in Nashville over the last two years. Bought Pinnacle Tower, build an ovation. They're investing a lot of money here. And they're very smart people. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it because they see the opportunity here to get some substantial returns that they can't get in Atlanta or Chicago or Dallas or Houston. Uh, so it's, uh, and I don't think we're even anywhere close because you see the inflow of money that's coming into the market right now. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, what Doug says is, is, is really important. And it doesn't get covered as much as who's the new company moving into town, but uh, who's the new money moving right, yeah. into town. And uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the investment um, opportunities in Nashville are skyrocketing And I think as well. it's because you look at it and think, okay, what happened over five years that all this institutional money is coming? And I think they see the fundamentals of the marketplace, right? So we don't have a sector like these oil towns like Oklahoma City that if the oil business goes to hell in a handbasket, the town can get really messed up. It's a diverse economy. It's a college town. Having health care as our top industry sector has turned out to be a good thing, right? Because America's getting old and we all need health care. So, so to me, the fundamentals are strong and they don't see those fundamentals changing. So now we're paid to be upbeat because we're running real estate companies, but, uh, uh, now, but wait, I don't see an end to wait it. Wait a minute, yeah. Janet. Are you saying it's not just because of the show Nashville? <laughs> oh, don't get me telling stories about that Nashville show. But, um, uh, they love that show Nashville. The Hankook Tire Korean Company loved loves Nashville the show yes. <laughs> so your point that you made earlier about the different how we're viewed by our peers I noticed that last time I was in Atlanta with a partnership 2020 led trip and uh, we were having these meetings with people in Atlanta that one weren't hard to get like they used to be mm -hmm. and secondly they were doing a better job pitching Nashville than we were they knew more about the market than we did and that was I mean, within five years, that was a pretty big change. Is, is that what you all see when you have these conversations across the country? People love this place. There's something yeah. about it. And this, this is weird. There is a hipness. Of course, we represent it beautifully sitting up here. <laughs> but there is a hipness. We all do. We all do. <laughs> there is a hipness and an edge that you can't underestimate the music industry because I think that is one of the reasons it swirls around. And these days, companies are fighting for young talent. Young talent are picking their cities before they pick their jobs. Absolutely. And these, you know, these, uh, Ralph Schultz used to laugh at me. I call them these skinny hipsters, right? Guys weren't that skinny when I was in college in the wait, skin, wait. scoots. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but they are flocking here and companies are driven by that. So that edge, that creative thing, that hipness is something that is very cool that we need to be sure we try to try to keep so and, and google fiber coming to nashville mm -hmm. adds tremendously to that yeah. as well and, and just the people i had i had two visitors one from chicago and one from new york in last week and took them to a predators game and, and they, i mean they're just amazed mm -hmm. people can't be this nice yeah. <laughs> there's something yeah. wrong are they on drugs? Are they? I mean, what's what's wrong down Who's here? That? Yeah. I said, yeah, we're, we're yeah, we got some good stuff down here. But, uh, <laughs> but they just they're blown away, and I think that's a big part. You know, we are a very welcoming community. A new company moves into town, we immediately embrace them. We we include them on boards. We get them involved in schools. You know, and and that's something that if we don't lose sight of that, because I go to Atlanta, and Atlanta's I hope. Um, the lady from JLL that spoke earlier, sorry about this, but, but Atlanta's very hard. You can come into Nashville and you can connect almost instantly. Mm -hmm. 
And because people are nice, people want to meet new people. What, 49% of the people are from out of state? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty incredible. And uh, so it's, it's fun. People enjoy coming here. And mm -hmm. I agree. And I think one of the things I didn't point out earlier is if you look at the top immigration cities for Williamson County in the past five years, only one of those cities comes from a state that touches Tennessee. The rest of them for places across the country, which is ex it's extraordinary to me. I, we were amazed when we uncovered that statistic last year for this program that 40, at that point, 48 percent of the people came from outside the state. That's yeah. that's extraordinary. And I suspect Nashville's probably the same thing, too, oh, in Davidson sure. County. Absolutely. Yeah. That's an interesting word, in migration. I'm not sure I had heard that before the last couple of years. So I have a question for the audience. I in migrated from the womb almost 60 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so raise your hand if you in migrated from somewhere else besides the womb. A lot wow. of folks have moved here from yeah. outside of Nashville. Well, so. Welcome. Yeah, yeah welcome. <laughs> we hope you love it here. All right, now this is a, this is another tough one. So Janet, I'm going straight to you. <laughs> what do you wait, think? Wait, wait. We, we can we can answer tough ones too. <laughs> I want you to hear her good answer. I'll handle it. I'll handle it. We just look stupid. We're really All right. All right. What is the biggest what is the biggest threat to our regional economy? You're asking me the ones you know I get fired up about. Uh, I recently went on the Metro Transit Authority Board of Directors and I've never been all that about transit, right? I've been all about economic development. I think that if we don't solve the transportation and infrastructure issues of the 10 county region, we could destroy yep. the region. And I mean, Matt, you and I have been at this a long time. 10 years ago, it hadn't hit people's radar screen as much, right. but there's a pain point now. And if you think there are 30,000 new souls a year that are packing up their lives and moving to Middle Tennessee, you take 30,000 cars a year and put them on these roads and you understand why we are where we are. So I am passionate about the transit issue and it is gonna be a tough nut to crack. It's gonna be expensive, it's gonna be difficult, it needs to be regional, and, um, but I think if we don't, we will be, we can be Atlanta and that's the mantra that people have had that that's not exactly what we want in Middle Tennessee, so. It was bumper to bumper traffic when I drove down here from Old Hickory Boulevard down Hillsborough Road all the way down to Fieldstone Farms, bumper to bumper. And uh, there's got to be some, some solution to that. I'm sure Franklin Road was the same way and mm -hmm. I-65 was the same way as well, yeah. in infrastructure. And we've got to start with that mass transit somewhere, somehow. Um, AMP may or may not be it, but, but you gotta, you got to start. you got to put that nail on the ground and, mm -hmm. and from that point forward. And the other key thing that Williamson County has really gotten right is the education piece. You guys have yeah. killed it on the education. The, the investment in the quality of education that you guys have done, and I may get thrown out of Davidson County and Sumner County, but you guys have absolutely done a phenomenal job in that because when, you, when somebody moves to Nashville, they've got to make a decision. It's a pretty simple decision. Do I want to live in Davidson County and send my kids to private schools, or do I want to live in Williamson County and send my kids to public schools. And that's always a big dilemma. And that's a true compliment to Williamson County and the leadership in Williamson County. And it's, it's phenomenal how that attracts CEOs, high level people that are coming in here. All they gotta do is walk in to Grassland Middle School or walk into Brentwood High School or walk into Franklin High School. It's pretty incredible, pretty incredible. That's good. Well, we have um, two really smart people on the panel today. Um, so, uh, so, so, you, you and me, Janet, you and me, yeah, you, 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 you hired me, so you're the smartest person on the panel? He's no, the I'm the dumbest just... person, the smartest. I hired him from Little Rock, Arkansas many yes, years you did. ago. You so. did, 10 years ago now, 10 years ago. But no, so let's go a little deeper in the transportation piece, because we know, I think you all agree, it's the biggest threat. We think it's the biggest threat as well. What are some potential solutions, or how do we get to the point where we can actually propose some solutions? Well, I think, I think you've got to look at it from a regional standpoint, the whole AMP thing was very laser focused on one street running mm -hmm. down the, mm -hmm. one of the wealthiest parts of Middle Tennessee. That doesn't solve any problems. We gotta, we gotta figure out how to get people off of 65, off of 24, off of 40, onto transportation from Rutherford County, from Williamson County. And, and, and it's gotta be, and I think with the AMP, 
nobody ever really understood the total concept of the amp. All they saw was a train run up and down West End every day, uh, which made everybody nervous. So, and I think we've got to, you know, it's going to take it, like Janet said, it's mm -hmm. going to take a huge investment. Uh, there was an article in the Business Journal this morning <coughs> saying we cannot go subterranean on our, on our mass transit because right. no. the geography and the topography of the region just won't allow that. So, I don't know. <clears throat> Since you're well, on the board now, let's get it solved. I would say. <laughs> Since you are so smart, uh, let's get it solved. All right. Uh, thank you, Doug. I'll let you know when we get that nailed down. So um, uh, I will say that, in, in my view, it's, it's a, the discussion needs to be at the right altitude. And I agree. If you focus on one project, people get all obsessed and they're down in the weeds at this altitude. To me, this is the economic future of the region. So the altitude needs to be higher and it needs to be a regional 25 year minimum master plan. And I will say the MTA and RTA are going through planning processes right now. And our, the board directive to the consultant and staff is throw out the rule book, look around the world because there are amazing innovative practices mm -hmm and let's be bold because we don't need an incremental solution. We need a big, bold vision. And I truly believe that when you create that big, bold vision, then the rest will follow. But if you just do it, like you say, down here in the weeds of one project, it'll get nitpicked to death, right? right? So big, bold region, so. Good. And it's okay to be evolutionary. You know, what they start out with initially may transition to a different type of mass transit, right. but you still have to start with something. That's yeah. right. And I will say, I saw some people, I saw Mayor Anderson, Mayor Moore in the audience that have been very involved in the MPO, the TMA group, very involved in solving this issue. So there's a lot of great leadership in Williamson County that's focused on this. I don't ever, I don't ever want to give the impression we're the only people doing stuff about it, because there's been groups that have been working for decades on this. And I think Janet's right. You've got to have the vision, and then, Steve's right, you have to have incrementally, how do you get there? And then the big question we all got to solve is how you pay for it, right? That's right. where it really comes down to is That's how you right. actually pay for it. Well, picking up from there and, and the comments you made, Janet, uh, Doug, I want you to respond to this question first, <laughs> since you're one of those two small well. ones. <laughs> you said uh, innovative and bold. Mm -hmm. So some of the mayoral candidates have mentioned true public-private partnership initiatives. So <clears throat> would you care to talk about that in solving infrastructure and mass transit? I, you know, it, I think we have to. You know, you, you got your large employer, the employers that you know, you look at Bridgestone is going into a half a million foot building in downtown. Where are those people going to come from? How are they going to get them there? You know, they've got to buy into it. HCA, one of the largest employers in Middle Tennessee, building a, a 400,000 foot building in the Gulch. They got to get people there. Uh, you know, community health, not all the community health employees are in Williamson County. So I think that it's got to be a very collaborative and it's going to take a significant investment on everybody's part. And we can't just depend on the public sector to drive this. I mean, the private sector, the large employers have to get involved, not only with their time, with their vision, but also with their dollars. I think that's critical to make this thing work. If we want it, if we want to be Nashville 20 years from now, and we want to have a robot TV show with Nashville on there singing, <laughs> you know, we, we've got to do it now. And we can't wait, because if we wait, every year we wait, we're getting two or three years further behind. And I think what, uh, I mean, some cities have looked at some privatization models where the private industry owns the fleet or that kind of thing. And to me, everything should be on the table. Uh, it, it, it's got to make sense. But you just look at Nashville, there's so many companies in this economy have privatized formerly public. So CCA with the prison business, um, ICA with road infrastructure. So I think we should put everything on the table because I love public private partnerships. I love that when government has skin in the game and private business has skin in the game, it seems to me those are the programs that work best, no matter what initiative you're working on, from economic development yeah. to, to whatever the project is. Yeah, so. Middle Tennessee, I think, has been a little slow in, in adopting the public-private partnership, and it can be used for infrastructure. It can mm -hmm. be used, you know, we talked about not enough land for new buildings. Public-private partnerships can be used to, to, uh, to create more, more building opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. Well, amazingly, you've blown through all the questions that we had from you. Um, so, so who do you who do we compete against? And we still have eight minutes left. So, who do you see us as, as our primary competition? Now, I talk about it from the regional standpoint. 
I mean, I always hear Austin, Texas. I hear Tampa. Sure. You know, the, the, those, uh, those cities. Um, re, you know, what, what's your region? It's the southeast? Then, then it is Charlotte, it's Tampa, right. um, Austin. To me, the common factor is we compete against some of the smartest, most educated cities in the country. So we're not benchmarking against the tier three average. We are, I mean, Austin, Texas has been one of the hottest economies mm -hmm. and they grew up tech. We grew up healthcare, they grew up tech. And they have that hype too. They, yeah, they're, yeah, they're just weirder than we are, right? Yeah. So we're, we're a little, <laughs> and they love that about themselves. But, but to me, if you look at Raleigh, Durham, you think of RTP, people think about it as smart, people and that's what Williamson County has in spades when you say okay why do they come to Williamson County I think it's because of smart people and some industry clusters that have grown up I mean the, just the healthcare cluster alone all these healthcare headquarters these guys like being near each other right it's a really real benefit so it, to me it comes down to smart people and that goes to the education system and on through Columbus Ohio Indianapolis pop up on, on some of the other cities we compete with as okay. well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything you want to add, Doug? No, I think they covered it. Okay, good. I remember the first or second year the Titans played here. So that what would not, I'm not counting at Vanderbilt Stadium, but in the new stadium, so 99, 2000, it was a Monday night football game. And for some reason I didn't go that night. I stayed home and watched it. And they talked about Nashville like we still had outdoor plumbing and we weren't wearing shoes yet and you know it was interesting but now when you see Nashville portrayed in any light uh, when the SEC basketball tournament was here or when any sporting events here and they show the skyline doesn't that feel different I mean what's what's happened over that 10 or 15 years has the city actually changed that much or has the perception of the city changed that much? Or the, the whole area is what I'm talking about. I think it's both. And this is the theory I have. I think the face of country music has changed a lot. So I think Taylor Swift is representative of Nashville, who is an international star in whatever genre. I think that evolution has changed perceptions. And then it's just, this town has changed. You can count nine cranes outside our office window right now. It is a phenomenon what is going on in the city. So I think it's both perception and reality. And, and we've done a good job in the work, live, play arena. Mm. You know, you, you attract the, the young talent, you attract the workforce, the companies will come. Mm -hmm. It's it, and used to, you attract the companies, the, the workforce will come. Yeah. It's, it's flipped. Right. And you know, there's a lot to do. You can be in the mountains, you can be at the beach, you can watch professional sports, you can go watch college football well maybe in some place you want to college football um, but uh, uh, there's just a lot to do and the kid and the and the younger the Millennials the pajama network people they want to be here where it's fun they want they want to be able to go to the microbreweries and to watch you know cultural things and and Nashville is invested and Middle Tennessee is invested in that as a whole and uh, so I think that's that's a big big change when the Titans moved in that stadium, I don't think the Gulch existed. And th most of these buildings down in Cool Springs didn't even exist either, you know, so, so we've changed a lot. And, and look at the names on the tall buildings downtown Nashville. All of those have changed, all the banks have changed, yeah, and you can have a Bridgestone name up there, Service Source has a big yeah. big sign, all that you can see from, from Monday, night, Monday Night Football. Yeah. Big changes. Well, let's end with this question then, um, and it's a great segue into what <laughs> we talked about the challenges, we talked about some of the benefits, but what makes each one of you most optimistic about the future of the Nashville region? Well, the, the investment sales that Doug brought up, there's a lot of money um, in, in Nashville, and the people just keep on coming. The younger generation, those guys with the skinny pants, just keep on, <laughs> keep on, keep on moving into town. And there's companies out there that are smart enough that they're gonna move to Nashville and move to Williamson County to take advantage of that influx of, of, uh, of, um, of labor. And the, the graduates, when they get out of Vandy or wherever, they're not leaving. Yep. Like you mentioned before, right. they're not leaving. Yep. So, so there's labor here. I think this is a region that believes in itself. Because if you look at all of our peer cities, we're all good, right? We all have our benefits. But I think this is a region, and I see Mayor Anderson and Mayor Moore, and where people, we, we claim our problems and we work to solve them. Mm -hmm. And I think that we believe in it and love it. And that is not true of many cities. A lot of people like to gripe about where they live. 
And I just think it's this genuine spirit. Uh, and I will say just this is fun for us because to me, the brokerage business in Nashville is an amazing place to be right now because we are all genuinely close friends. So to me, just we, we understand competition, but we also understand that we work together. And I mean, you'll see us having drinks and lunch and all that. And so to me, that's good for the market. You don't want a cutthroat, ugly place. Uh, uh, and then we'll fist fight uh, over here after, <laughs> after this, so. <laughs> yeah, it, I think diversity, the diversity of our workforce, the diversity of our companies that have a presence here. You know, think about it. We've got people over here curing cancer on West End, and we've got people making tires, you know, uh, it's their world, their corporate headquarters here. I mean, and everything in between. And uh, the diversity and the culture of the people I think is the most exciting thing. But and like those guy, the guy from Chicago and New York said, y'all cannot be this nice. <laughs> we actually are. And uh, you know, and, and you just look at it and you go to these other cities, whether it's Charlotte or Raleigh or Austin or Atlanta or Jack Ta Tampa or Jacksonville. The, the people are just not as warm. And Nashville, the Southern hospitality and, and just the professionalism in which we go about our lives and our business is just phenomenal. That's, that's a great way to end it. And it's hard to quantify, but everybody in this room knows that that's real. So please uh, join me in thanking our panelists today, Joey, Doug, Janet, Steve, great job. We will uh, take a short break and uh, please join us for the final presentation at 10 o'clock. Thanks. <laughs>